Hey guys, all the information taken in this video is from Century 21 Accounting. Today we're going to go over um, chapter 10-3 in the textbook. So this is accounting for cash and credit card sales. We're going to learn another special journal. We've learned the purchases journal, we've learned the cash payments journal, we've learned the sales journal, and next we're going to learn the cash receipts journal. This is any kind of cash that we're getting that shows a receipt. So, um, the whole purpose of accounting is to take data, these source documents, and put them into a organized fashion so one individual can sit down, look at the books, and analyze how much money they're making, losing, spending, etc. So they take every source document and import it into a system. For us, we're importing it into paper and pencil journals and ledgers, but for accountants, they use computer software programs. And even in college, you don't learn the computer software programs. They don't really teach you it until you're on the job. Um, one college professor used an online software system for me, but that's about it. So um, I know it's rough doing it on the paper, but it is the same thing on the computer. If you can master it on the paper, you can master it on the computer pretty easily. So today is just about processing sales transactions and credit cards. So um, a business typically makes their money from cash sales. Cash sales include credit cards, debit cards, cash, check, Venmo, anything like that. These are cash sales. Um, typically, companies like, I would even say Giant, let's use Giant as an example, have a point of sale terminal, POS. This is a specialized computer used to collect store and report all the information about a sales transactions um, into a terminal. So every item in that store at Giant is numbered, has a description, has a price, has a quantity, and all you do is scan the UPC symbol on the merchandise and all of this data gets entered into the computer as well as when you scan it, it then it says, okay, this item has been bought. At the end of the day, or actually probably whenever you want it, a computerized system for point of sale can print out a terminal summary. So if this, this computerized system has all this data in it, it can print out this terminal summary that reports the cash and credit card sales of whatever went through that system. So every employee scanning the things coming through, um, and someone pays with cash or credit card, this is how the information would look, I guess so, generically for a terminal summary. So here is the date, the time, a visa sale, a MasterCard sale, debit card sale, a cash sale, total sale. So this is the terminal summary. It's probably pages long for a store like Giant. But then they can at least look and say, um, okay, how much of this is how much sales did we make for today, what came out in taxes kind of thing. But this is also the source document that they use to make journal entries. Okay, so this is how they can record those sales in the actual journal. Um, then we have a batch report. A batch report is just for debit and credit cards. In the textbook, they use the term credit cards for debit and credit. Debit and credit have two different meanings when it comes to the card. A debit card is probably something you all have or will obtain one day. A debit card, it just, you go to the gas pump, you put your card in, the money's taken right out. Debit card's taken right out of your checking account. A credit card, you, earn, you um, accumulate or um, you put you put the payments on credit. So let's say you have a three thousand dollar credit limit. Um, any payment that you have is put on credit, and you only have to pay it once a month. For purposes of the textbook, credit cards include both debit cards and credit cards. Okay, so they when they use the term credit card, it's both debit and credit. So a report of credit card sales produced by a point of sale terminal is called a batch report.
So this is a bash report, just the credit cards, only the credit cards. Whereas the terminal summary shows the total sales. Okay. So when you um, decide to prepare a batch report from the point of view terminal, this process is called batching out. So this is a term that they used. Um, so we've got batch report, terminal summary, and you're batching out. This is an important thing to note here off to the slide. All businesses that accept credit cards as a method of payment have a contract with a credit card processing company. So here there's a little scenario that Three Greens works with Credit Corporation. And Credit Corp is the one that works with Capital National Bank. And so when Three Greens batches out, they send this to Credit Corp. Credit Corp sends it to the bank and within two to three business days, Giant, who or Three Greens, who just batched out, actually gets their money. Typically, it's two to three business days. Um, sometimes it can be within 24 hours. So it's not the actual company um, working with each individual credit card company. Because if you think about it, there's so many credit card companies. The business hires a contracting company that works with all the credit card companies and gets everyone their money. So those are just some facts that we have. This is the new journal that we're gonna learn about, cash receipts journal. So we have the cash receipts journal. This is for any kind of transaction involving the receipt of cash. So you put the date, account title, document number, post ref, you have the general, like normal, but then you have accounts receivable credit, sales credit, sales tax payable credit, sales discount debit, and cash debit. So if you were to receive cash, if we go back to the T accounts, all the time, if you are receiving cash, the normal balance is the debit. So that's why that's debited. So this is literally just for cash receipts. If you are getting something, if you are getting cash, this is where you record it. Because all of these accounts are indicated because if you receive cash for any of these, it will decrease. So for example, accounts receivable. The normal balance to increase in accounts receivable is a debit. Here, accounts receivable credit, well that means it's decreasing. So if you're decreasing your accounts receivable, you've got, you got cash for it. So you would credit or debit cash credit accounts receivable it's the same thing for each of these sales sales tax payable and sales discount debit it's the opposite okay so sales discount is kind of like purchases discount it's cash discount on a sale taken by the customer so if it says like um if you pay this statement early you get a two percent discount 210 net 30 that is the purchases discount Flipped. So this is a sales discount. So we have um, a sales discount debit. You might ask, well, can I just credit the sales and move on? Like, can I just credit this account? Because then it decreases our um, sales. I mean, debit. Um, the answer is no, because let me write it out. Debit, credit, sales, sales, discount. Okay, so if you take a discount and we made a $4,000 sale, you might say like, hey, why can't I just debit for 400 if that's the discount and bring me to a new balance? If you use the um, sales discount, this new account that we're learning, normal balance is a debit, then you can see as a, um, an accountant how much you're actually uh, getting on these discounts. And you can have an account for these discounts so you can see, oh, okay, um, let's see, we have 1,300 in sales discounts. We actually are losing a lot of money because we're offering all these discounts. So that's why you want to make sure you record it in the sales discounts. So cash and credit card sales. 
Here is how we journalize it in the cash receipts. The entry says recorded cash and credit card sales, 6,280 plus sales tax, 376.80. Total is 6,656.80. That's the total that we get for the cash, 6,656.80. The total sales credit is the 2,000 is the 6,280, because that's how much we recorded in sales. And then we have a tax, 3,000 or 376.80, it tells us. Taxes, sales, cash, because we got it in cash, cash or credit cards. All right, so this number, these numbers are taken from the terminal summary. So if I show you the terminal summary again, sales, sales tax total sales sales tax sales sales tax total okay so we journalize it just like before next page talks about cash receipts on account so this says received cash on account from Edmonds hospital 2516 and 80 cents covering s Four four eight receipt number six ten. So this was an account we received cash on account from. So we go ahead and put the account title. We received it from Endman's Hospital, and we write off the accounts receivable. We received cash for two thousand five hundred and sixteen and eighty. Okay. So we just go based off of whatever accounts are being affected. T accounts are very productive in these situations because you could say, okay, what's being affected? Definitely cash because we received cash. But what did we receive cash from? Oh, accounts receivable. So now the textbook is kind of doing the thinking for you, whether it's a um, debit or a credit balance kind of thing, because it already gives it credit. So you don't have to think, is this a credit or a debit? Because if you know it was on account, it gives you it right there. Okay. Um, and the next page is about just calculating that sales discount 210 net 30 so the invoice total was the 1450 there was a two percent discount if you took it within um the first 10 days and they did so the sales discount was the 29 dollars to record that we open up this new sales discount you can see it we would do um the equation says or Equation? No, the transaction says received cash on account from Palmer Destin Tree, 1,421, covering sales invoice number 462 for 1,450, less the 2% discount, $29. So we received cash on account. We put the date, who'd we receive it from? Palmer's, the document number, R611, it told us that. And then we go through the accounts receivable credit. The total amount of the account was 1450 They took the sales discount, and that means the rest of the amount we received in cash. So we received this much cash on account, 1421 1421 Don't forget the dates, the account titles, um, and the document numbers. Document numbers are always at the end. It might confuse you because it says covering sales invoice number, but you want to make sure you use the receipt number, okay? Um, good luck and continue to review over each um, textbook page, and I'll see you when we do the work together problem.